everybody welcome back to the channel this is mystic waters and today we are playing ostentatious yes it is ostentatious day you know saturday is ostentatious day so welcome back welcome back welcome back let's go ahead and get into it but remember to like comment subscribe and share if you you care honey okay okay hit that notification bell as well you know you need to know when i upload draw you don't want to miss out do you don't you don't at all episode 20 all right let's get into it okay this next chapter is from johnny's point of view mm, enjoy you are you are okay what a fool i was what a damned fool minutes before i had given my word to baby that i would keep my temper and now i stood over a huddled heap of a man his blood stained my face and hands i heard her shrieking and saw her running it wasn't until bill and fred tore me away and held my arms back that i broke through the bubble only then did i realize what i had done what I would call cost us. And I stood frozen in my own stupidity as I felt my life with baby slip through my fingers. I could see if Robert was breathing or not. They will hang me for this. Johnny, is he alive? I spat onto the floor, trying to rid the taste of blood from my mouth. For now he is. What the hell were you thinking? More footsteps. Johnson, this is the end for me. Johnson, what have you done? He asked for it, sir. You brutish bastard. Take him to the cellar and lock him in. Two hands seized my arms, but I shrugged them free. Leave me be. I know where the cellar is. I'll not resist. They walked me there and I felt them bolt the door behind me. Oh my God, poor Johnny. <laughs> Only then did my mind start working. The cog spun frantically as I thought of baby. She must be terrified. How could I do this to her? How could I let her down like this? I had destroyed everything. I sat for what felt like days before the door bolt slid. Yo, what's gonna happen? Oh, I want an apple. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I stood to attention, ready to face the authorities. Only to stand facing baby's father, which seemed even more dire given the circumstances. Johnson, Mr. Bradford, sir. I've no time to beat around the bush. Did you beat Robert? I did, sir. At least you're not a lying coward, Johnson. Tell me why you beat him so badly. My reasons are my own, sir. See here, boy. I am trying to decide whether we hand you over to the police or not. Don't play the damned fool. I am playing nothing, sir. My reasons are my own. I cannot betray the confidence of others. They may hang you, you know. I, I know. Your mistress will see at the very least that you're, a, you're whipped again. And then cast out for oh of your position. Do you understand that, Johnson? Aye, sir, I understand. And the thought of another flogging does not move you to confess? Nay, sir. You are either very brave or very stupid. I suspect it could be, uh, could be a dangerous combination of two. Aye, that could be, sir. I will return if you have nothing further to say in your defense. Nothing, sir. He exhaled and left the room. Look, what was that? It's the ring. It's the ring. Now then, what the devil are you doing in here? Bold as brass, my mother's ring lay in a basket of apples. As the door closed, it caught the light and almost winked to alert me to its presence. Are you proud of your lad, mom or ma'am? I wouldn't. Okay, wait. I wonder when you say if you could see me now. I wonder what my life would have been had you been around. I suppose that is a sign that I shouldn't have tried to sell the ring. I'm sorry the thought even crossed my thick skull. I just, I love her. I want to make a life together, but it seems the fates do not smile upon us. The stars are no longer aligned and our love is no longer enough. I'm trying, ma'am, but I seem to stumble at every hurdle. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> Johnny, I'm sorry. Hours later, the bolt slid again and I jumped to my feet. What's going to happen? Mr. Bradford was accompanied by Maxwell this time, and I glanced behind them to see if any police were with them. They were alone. Now then, Johnson, I have a few more questions to ask you. But before I start, Maxwell assures me that you are an honest man. In that case, I, sir, 
Penelope Castle was with child earlier this summer. Were you the father of that child? Nay, sir. Then who was the father of this child? I paused, my mouth dry and my fingers twitching. Johnson, Mr. Bradford has asked you a question. Robert, sir. Why did you tell my brother, your master, that you were responsible for her? Because she is like a sister to me. I felt responsible for her. I should have done more to protect her. I see. Are you aware of any other woman that Robert has courted? I, sir. Any women perhaps of higher station that would completely ruin them should he have succeeded? I inhaled sharply. I, sir. I have asked all I need to know. Maxwell, prepare to take a letter for my brother. This matter is dealt with. What is to become of me now, sir? I would shake your hand, Johnson, if it wasn't so bloody. So clean yourself up. You won't be able to work tomorrow if you don't take care of your hands. Work, sir? Yes, lad. I can find no fault in your actions. You have behaved in the best interest of several young ladies, one of which being of great value to me. I am indebted to you. One of which? Had baby told him? May I leave, sir? Certainly, Cassius. I paused. Is it Cassius? It is, is it not? Your Christian name. Aye, sir. Nobody calls me that, though. Why do they call it? What do they call you? Johnny, sir. I believe I know your father, Johnny. He and I were friends many years ago. I am sorry that you never knew him, though I can see his reasons. My father, sir? Yes, lad. We shall talk on this another day. Today, I think I've earned a rage large brandy for all the trouble you have caused. I apologize, sir. Quite all right. Now be on your way. He saved y'all. We saved him. We saved Johnny. <laughs> As I left the room, I pinched my cheek to check I was still awake. Did that really just happen? How in hellfire did I walk away from this? Johnny? Penny. Come on, quickly, let me clean you up. She took me upstairs and bathed my bloodied hands, wrapped, wrapping them in paper. As she worked, she explained all that baby had done, how she had saved me, how Robert had been thrown out as soon as the surgeon was through and how his jaw was wired for six weeks at least because of how badly I had broken it. Wow. <laughs> Does baby know that you are free? No, you must go to her this evening. Surprise her. You two are truly charmed. I don't even know how you walked away from this without even a slap on the wrist, but the love you two have is clearly blessing you both. She fought ferociously for you today. You two are lucky to have one another. She's going to be... Wait, she is going to be vexed when she finally sees me. I had just promised today I would curb my temper. She will bend your ear for 10 minutes and then be kissing your neck to the next 10. So stop being such a baby. She giggled at her pun. I sighed, inspecting damage to my hands. Penny, I, are you angry at me for what I did to him? I know you really cared. Not another word. That man's heart was black as coal. He took everything from me and he got what he deserved. I only wish I could have seen his face when you landed that first punch. He's a jerk. He deserved it. I don't care. <laughs> I waited until after midnight when, or when I knew the house would be still. So it was him in the bed. Why? It was him. It wasn't a dream. Okay. Sneaking into her bedroom was an art I was now profession in. Ooh. Johnny! I saw her laying in an uncomfortable sleep and eased myself in beside her. Yaw. She sighed heavily, sensing my weight. She rolled closer and I wrapped her in my arms. Suddenly her eyes snapped open. Johnny? Baby. What? Am I dreaming? If you are, then it must be a very good dream. I chuckled as she rubbed the sleep from her eyes. Only when she fully saw me did her manner change. Her lips sneered and her arms folded tightly over the perfect chest. I was in for it now. You! Baby, let me explain. Explain what? How you could have been arrested today because you have such... You are... Wait, sorry. <laughs> because you have as much self-control as a toddler. Yet I'm the only one they call baby. Hey now. No, Mr. Johnson, you selfish, idiotic, foolish, stupid, selfish, 
you said selfish already. She curled her hand round and slapped me hard across the face twice. <laughs> Whoa now, stop this. That uh, it's hardly fair as I cannot defend myself. My hands are bruised enough. Cease and slapping me, woman. I'm injured, damn it. Not nearly injured enough for my liking. Oh, now you are being heartless. No, you are the heartless one. You almost broke mine today. Oh, sweetheart, I am so sorry. I couldn't control myself when he was trying to force you to. And you were... You should have told me before. This wouldn't have happened had you not concealed it. Don't you dare blame me for this one. You are the one who lost his temper. And, and you are the one keeping secrets again. So it seems we both are at fault. Neither of us are in the clear. And now I have a clapped cheek as well as broken knuckles. So who is truly to blame? She looked as though she was about to quarrel, but stopped herself. Good God, she drove me wild when her temper flared. Her cheeks flushed and her eyes became alive with fire. Every time she yelled at me, all I longed to do was grab her and kiss her. Take control and harness the flame that burned so brightly. I knew I would get burned, but that was half the fun. She pouted her lip in a vexing fashion that made me want to bite it. I licked my lips and sighed, controlling my passion. Now then, can we agree never to keep secrets again? If we are both honest, truly honest, then this will never happen again. I will have no need to lose my temper and you will have no need to slap me. Are we in agreement? Yes. Am I forgiven? Yes. Am I able to thank you for saving my life? Yes. Am I able to kiss you? Yeah. She hadn't got the word out before I pounced on her. Desperate to feel her touch and taste her lips, I pulled her closer and winced as my knuckles reminded me of how very broken they were. She sensed my recoil and took my hands in hers. She delicately, tenderly kissed every cut and bruise along the ridges of my vest. Sorry. <laughs> Before pushing me backwards and taking full control of my body, I lay back and watched her work as she made me forget about any pain I once had. Oh God, this woman. Thank God for this woman. Oh, you are, that was beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. I love this story. As the dawn started to break, I looked at the sleeping goddess in my arms. She felt me start to edge away and pulled me closer. Release me, siren. I must go and be gone before the dawn. Not say it's... Oh, wait. No, stay. It's not done yet. My sweetheart, it is. But fear not. One more month. Nothing stands between us now. One more month and then nothing can tear me away from you. Nothing can come between us. One more month, Mrs. Johnson. Then you are mine forever. A month feels like a lifetime when we are apart. One more month of torment to ensure a lifetime of happiness? I will take it a thousand times over, and it will come sooner than you think, mark my words. Now sleep, my angel, my goddess. Sleep and dream of the life we will build. My joy, my love, my all. You, this is so beautiful. You, you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, we got to do the extra singing, you are. Losing myself in the lips I had longed for, I felt him pull away. I searched his face and saw a flash of pain as he adjusted his knuckles, clearly hurting from earlier. I pushed myself up, taking his hands in mine, and saw him wince slightly as he apprehensively relinquished control. His rough, calloused fingers were black, blue, and bloodied. <sighs> I brought them to my lips, kissing every inch of injury before making my way down his wrist. He sighed and closed his eyes, relaxing into the pillows behind him. I took this as my cue to continue climbing onto him and kissing down his neck as he excelled. Exhaled. <laughs> See him so vulnerable, ignited my nurturing side as I took care of his every desire. My strong and domineering man, so meek and mild, I fell in love with him anew. I would love this man for the rest of my life, for every day I found something new to fall in love with. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this story, y'all, it just, it, it touches me. <laughs> it touches me. <laughs> I mean, for real, y'all, who doesn't love this story? It's amazing. Like, ost ostentatious. Ostentatious. <laughs> 
thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Hello to all the new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. Yes, it's me, Mystic Waters Crazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I hope you guys are enjoying these stories that I am uploading on YouTube. Episode Chooser Story is freaking awesome. I absolutely love this app. And you know we are going to continue. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. And I will catch y'all on another one. Bye-bye. <laughs>